Hi, I'm Brett from Elgato, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take your Facecam 4K and optimize its image quality from lighting to settings to effects and more. So let's get started. First, let's talk lighting. This is a typical setup someone might have. I have the monitor in front of me, which is outputting some light towards me, and then I have some overhead LED lights. Now there's a couple things wrong here. First of all, with the monitor, it's not actually outputting that much light, but also what's happening on the screen affects that lighting. If I switch to a really bright web page or I switch to a dark mode uh, on an app, that's going to change the amount of light and also the color of the light that's landing on me. The second thing is with the lighting overhead. This lighting is for seeing in the room. It's not meant for video. It has a bit of a green tint uh, and it also flickers. So we often refer to Facecam 4K as a studio webcam and studios have a lot of light. So let's turn on some key lights, some practicals behind me and some colorful accent lighting. And we'll turn off these LEDs overhead and then see how that looks. And right away, there's a big difference. First of all, the lighting feels more even and intentional, I would say. Secondly, since we simply have more light in here, there's more photons bouncing around, Facecam 4K has an easier time getting to the right exposure. To point that out, look at how much lower the ISO is on our readout here. We're at like 700 to 800, which is really good. You want your ISO to be probably under 1000 as a target for Facecam 4K. So at 750, we're, we're looking really good. So as a quick summary, ISO represents the sensitivity of the sensor in the camera. And higher sensitivity means a brighter image, but also more noise. So with automatic exposure, if you want your ISO to be lower, you simply need more light. It's kind of as simple as that. To demonstrate that, right now we're at 750. I'm gonna turn off my key lights. The scene's gonna get way darker. And we're at 4000 ISO. Now, Facecam 4K's automatic exposure mode does a really good job in the vast majority of cases. However, there are some situations where you might want to nudge Facecam 4K in one way or the other, and you have a couple options without going into manual quite yet. So let's first talk about metering. So the default option is center weighted. Center weighted essentially means right around here in the frame, Facecam 4K is going to prioritize. So for example, if I move out of the way, it gets way brighter because right over here is much darker. However, let's say your face cam 4K is not positioned so that you're right here. Maybe it's off to the side looking at you from some other angle and center weighted doesn't really work for you. Well, you can change metering to average and that's going to look at the whole frame equally. Uh, in this case, a lot of the scene is darker grays and, and I have some black uh, fabric bins right there. So that causes the whole scene to feel like it needs to be brighter according to the camera. Next up, there is compensation. Now compensation goes down to negative three stops, positive three stops. Now what compensation does is it's basically telling the camera, whatever you think is correct, move it up a little bit or move it down a little bit. This is great if you still wanna be on automatic because you have changing lighting. So for example, you have all natural lighting. You have a big window and you're lit entirely by the sun, but as say clouds go by or the, the sun moves throughout the day, you wanna have automatic exposure still track that but have control over just how bright or how dark the image is, compensation will do that for you. The last option to change here is dynamic range. And so we can change this from standard, the default, to wide. This changes how the image is processed on the camera to help with situations where you might have a really bright window behind you or really bright lights. Now you may have also spotted a high dynamic range. Now this requires the Facecam 4K to be running in 30 FPS mode. so. To demonstrate that, I'll set it to 30 FPS and then it will switch over and I'll switch to high. Now, right away, there is a little more detail that's exposed. So we see a little more detail in the lava lamp, which hasn't totally woken up yet, um, and a little more in the salt lamp over here. But to be completely honest, high dynamic range really is not best suited for this situation. High dynamic range is best suited for situations in which you have really extreme lighting. You have a really bright window right next to you, but then you're much darker. Uh, in those extreme lighting situations, that's where high dynamic range makes sense. Now to lock in your exposure and tweak it from here and perfect it, we need to turn off automatic mode and then go fully manual. So we have two options here for manual exposure. We have shutter speed, 
which goes all the way down to one ten thousandth of a second, which if you're doing a vlog on the surface of the sun, there you go. It also goes all the way up to one tenth of a second. Uh, if you want to do a 90s music video, you know, you're all set. So I'm going to set this back to one sixtieth of a second, and then I'll bring the ISO back up to where automatic said was good, right around 850. So with manual exposure, it's never going to change. If you want this to be locked in and you have static lighting that never changes, then manual is, is really what you're looking for. I'm going to move on to noise reduction. I'm going to talk about white balance afterwards. We have off, low, medium, high, and custom. Low is the default. Now to show the noise in a little more detail, I'm going to zoom in on my lava lamp, which seems to be finally warming up. And here, if I set this to off, you can see the noise come through and low, it's almost immediately deleted. Now low is going to be plenty for most situations. You can switch to medium and then high, but depending on the lighting, the amount of noise, you may not notice much difference like here. Now for myself, I like going for custom. And then here I dial in the 3D noise reduction to between one and 5%, which typically is just enough to take the edge off while still maintaining a lot of detail in the scene. For an explanation of 2D versus 3D noise reduction, we'll have our Facecam 4K overview video linked down below. All right, now that we've covered noise reduction, it's time to move to white balance. Now again, just like with automatic exposure, automatic white balance will do a very good job the vast majority of the time. In my case, it does look like it's correcting properly. However, I do have a lot of warm tones in the room and it's trying to compensate for that. So if I turn this off and then I tweak it a little more warm here, this is a bit more what the scene looks like. And the reason for that is I have some blue accent lighting over here. I have these warm wood tones behind me. I have very warm lighting to my uh, left here. Automatic white balance is saying, there's a lot of warm tones, so the lighting must be warm and I need to make it neutral. In my case, I actually like the look of warm lighting. So by setting it to manual or turning off automatic and then manually setting the white balance to something more warm, it's a bit more of how I prefer it. Now it's time to move on to effects. So in the effects tab, there are you know pretty basic options like mirroring, which wow, mirroring really, really throws off my brain. Um, but we also have AI backgrounds and LUTs. So AI backgrounds use an NVIDIA RTX GPU to power them. We have a tasteful blur, which by the way, keeping at 0% looks really good. You can of course go really high. Now you also have LUTs or lookup tables, and these are essentially like color grading presets. And we have way more information in our dedicated Camera Hub 2.0 video that goes over LUTs and uh, how they work in Camera Hub. Now, when you freshly install Camera Hub, it's going to include five LUTs, but you can get more from Elgato Marketplace. Some are created by Elgato and some are created by community makers. I happen to really like True Tone. I like it at right around 40%. So intensity is a really nice option. If there's a LUT you like, but it's a little bit too strong, you can dial it back. I think this makes it look kind of cozy. I like how the colors look. Now, there's two important notes to mention about AI backgrounds and LUTs. Firstly, AI backgrounds use your NVIDIA RTX GPU. So you need an NVIDIA RTX GPU to use this feature. Uh, LUTs are compatible with Windows and Mac and do not require any special GPU. That is only for the AI backgrounds. So if you like how this looks, then this is available on, well, any version of Camera Hub 2.0 or newer. Secondly, you need to select the Elgato virtual camera inside of your uh, Discord, Zoom, Slack, Teams, video settings. So if you select Elgato Facecam 4K in those settings, you're going to get basically this image because this is coming straight from the camera. In order to get this look with these options added, you need to make sure you select Elgato virtual camera. All right, that about wraps everything up in terms of lighting and settings inside of Camera Hub. However, there are ways to squeeze a little more quality out of Facecam 4K, and that is with filters. If you weren't aware, Facecam 4K has a 49 millimeter filter thread. So your favorite filters like Starburst or Glimmer Glass or Circular Polarizers for getting rid of reflections and glare, you can use those on Facecam 4K. We have a video talking all about using filters on Facecam 4K including how they work and which ones to look at. We'll have that linked down below. We covered a lot of information in this video. If you would like a written version of it, 
we have an article linked to down below from Elgato Explorer. Let us know down in the comments if you have any questions about Facecam 4K or Camera Hub. And be sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube to learn more about Facecam 4K and other Elgato products. Thanks for watching.